Oh, I think it's uh, Mr. Allred first. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, you, just, you just walked in, re recognize the gentleman from Texas. Go right ahead. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I'd like to ask um, unanimous consent to enter a few tweets into the record. Sure. Let's Can you identify the tweets? Let's see. It. I think staff should have them. Can we put the tweets up on the screen? Let's take a look at a couple of tweets from Kanye West, who now goes by Ye, but at the time of these tweets had 32 million followers. Mr. Taibbi, can you read the, the tweet on the left? Can you see the text there? I actually can't. My eyes, that is not, is not so great. I'll read it to you. It says, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people, in all caps. The funny thing is, I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toured with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. And can you see the tweet next to it? I can, yes. It's a, would you describe it? It's a Star of David, the swastika in the middle of it? Yes. Should those tweets have been taken down by Twitter? I think it's a difficult question. Hate speech is protected in the United States. Um, one of my heroes growing up was the Ukraine-born author Isaac Babel. He gave a speech at the first Soviet Writers' Congress, and he was asked if any important rights had been taken away. And he sarcastically answered, no, the only rights that have been taken away are the right to be wrong. And the crowd laughed, but he was making an important point, which is that in a free country, you can't have freedom without the freedom to be wrong. Well, let's, uh, let's move on to a couple of other tweets, not from somebody with 32 million followers. This one says, Elon now controls Twitter. Unleash, unleash the racial slurs, K-word and N-word. The other one says, I can freely express how much I hate N-words now. Thank you, Elon. See, these tweets were taken down, even by Elon Musk's Twitter, and they should have been, because they're hate speech. And they lead to real-world reactions. In fact, in the 12 hours after Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter. Hate speech of all kinds spiked on Twitter, including a 500% increase in the use of the N-word. And it's not just online. From 2021, from 2020 to 2021, hate crimes rose almost 44% in major cities. So hate speech online has real impacts in life. And so does election misinformation and propaganda online. Now, Mr. Taibbi, I've, I've read a lot of your work. I respect some of it. But you've cast a lot of doubt on Russian mis uh, in interference in our elections. And today, you have virtually alleged a vast government conspiracy to censor speech. But I can tell you that the not threat alleged. to our democracy, I'm not asking you a question. I'll let you know when I do. I'll t I can tell you that the threat to our democracy is very real. And it's not just the elections that get all the headlines. In 2018, in a congressional race, two Kremlin-aligned foreign nationals named Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman succeeded in funneling illegal Russian money to a Trump-aligned super PAC that spent $1.3 million to support the Republican candidate. That was my election. My neighbors in East Dallas saw advertisements online, in their mailbox, and on their TV paid with Russian money. That's not my opinion. That's a fact proven in the Southern District of New York. Both Parnas and Fruman were convicted to 21 months and one year respectively for conspiring to make political contributions by a foreign national along with another of other campaign finance related violations. We live in an information age where malign actors do want to use social media to influence our elections, both big, the ones that you've spent a lot of time talking about, and small, like mine. Mr. Congressman, and it may should I ask be a, a bipartisan goal. No, you don't get to ask questions here. Okay. It should be a bipartisan goal to ensure that Americans and only Americans determine the outcome of our elections, not fear mongering. And I think, I hope that you can actually take this with you, because I honestly hope that you will grapple with this. That it may be possible that if we can take off the tinfoil hat, that there's not a vast conspiracy, but that ordinary folks 
and national security agencies responsible for our security are trying their best to find a way to make sure that our online discourse doesn't get people hurt or see our democracy undermined. And that the very rights that you think they're trying to undermine, they may be trying to protect. And I yield back. Gentleman yields back.